Alright, welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to be testing the oil injection output pump for proper output. So, this is my, uh, it's my 2000 ZR700, it's got a 95 ZR700 engine in it. And I've been kind of going back and forth about what the issue is, but after this last trip that we took this thing up north, um, I went through about two quarts in one tank, and this tank is a 13 gallon tank because it's a, a 2000 chassis. So that's what I'm going to be doing. First thing I did is I lifted the slut up, uh, shut the fuel off, I opened the hood, opened up the, uh, the belt cover, got that out of the way, took the belt off, took the carbs off. Um, you know, you, I mean, all I did is I took the chokes off, uh, took the fuel lines off, and was careful to uh, have a rag under there so any extra fuel would drain into the rag so it didn't get all over the place. Got the carburetors out of the way, and now I'm to the point where I am going to be removing the main uh, pump line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this off, remove it. I already have a towel underneath. Uh, you can see the red towel right there. Uh, that's underneath and that'll catch any residual oil. And then um, once I get that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my oil usage tool, which is just a burette. It's a 25cc burette that's got a uh, valve on the end. It's acrylic. And um, that's got a tube on the end, and then I'll hook the tube up to the end of the pump inlet right there. And then we'll put it all back together once we get it full of oil. I'm gonna bleed the pump make sure oil's coming out and there's no bubbles and then I will disconnect the the oil injection pump cable from the throttle because you need to run the the pump arm closed for three minutes at 3000 rpms and it'll be a certain so you have to see how much it's it's putting out and then you also have to run it at wide open throttle for two minutes at 3,000 RPMs, the the arm has to be set to wide open throttle. So, all right. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get that removed. So I'm just gonna take a, a pair of needle nose and uh, clamp it onto the hose here, and hopefully that will stop us any supply of oil. Seems like that's working, so that's good. Have to figure out a way to. Get it out of the way. The thing that sucks is this uh, hose is so damn big. I don't know why they use such a big one. I'm not gonna be a happy camper if this comes off. Okay, so the supply line is off. Minimal mess, so that's good. Go ahead and try and clean this up as best I can. These twins are so tight with the way that they're set up. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do here is find another hose adapter to get over that. So that's a pretty big barb that they got on the end of that pump right there. So I have a piece here and then this is a 90 degree angle and the oil usage tool will plug into the top of this and then I have this bushing here that will fit into here because this is too big. So. I'm gonna screw these together. These are all just parts that I found here in my little stashes. So I'm gonna get those put together and I'll be back. You wanna make sure that when you install this line you don't have any kinks or things that will disrupt the proper flow. We 
get a wild one here, folks. tool here. Follow that blue line up. There's the valve and that is the burette. And it's just got a 25 mil and it starts at one at the top and then it drops down all the way down to the 25 mark. So you fill that up and it'll drop down and tell you how much oil was used. So it's pretty cut and dry. Okay, so there's that. Now, the next thing we need to do, already getting some wear down there. Not good, folks, not good. That was a little bit of coolant that I left there and then I just went and wiped it this, when I was messing around in here earlier and it just wiped right off. So, yeah, it's, it's come, that's the VHT. It's chemical resistant, but you know, the other thing I didn't do was sand this chassis like I did with my wife's. So that's probably my other issue. I probably could have pulled everything out and then like sandblasted it outside. That probably would have been better, but didn't want to mess with all that. But like I said, you know, my process is, uh, it's changing with time, so. All right, you know what, let me actually put this rag back down here. Grab my special tool here. I don't know why this stupid thing keeps going back and forth like this. Oh yeah, there we go. Much better. Might rock the other way though, but. Yeah, see? <laughs> Oh, so where did it go? So plastic ring spacer. It's a totally different story. You gotta be careful with those. So now, closed position well it's at the idle position it's supposed to at 3,000 rpms for three minutes it should put out about two cc's in that closed position down there so we'll see don't know how you guys put your carbs back in, but I like to try and stuff the, the rear bell back into the airbox boot and then shove it in back into the airbox a little bit. And then it'll slip right into place usually. It's on there. There we go. Okay.
Doggone lights round. The cage on it is round, so it doesn't want to sit on anything. It just rolls. And as far as these hose clamps go, there's no need to crank them down. So it just makes the hose bulge. All you gotta do is just snug them up enough to where they're gonna not pull off. Because all it's doing is just, it's that's the whole point that there's like a, a bump on the barb. So you put the hose clamp below the barb, right below it, and then just snug it up around the, the hose. And it'll just pinch, it'll put just enough pressure to seal off around that that uh, raised section at the end of the barb there, so. One thing I did here is I took the the plunger off because this one likes to pop off with a different in, difference in pressure. And I learned my lesson with the choke cables. I busted one off inside the, <laughs> the carburetor one time. So let's see if I can do this again without. All right, there we go. That went in nicely. Perfect. That's how it's supposed to go. Nice and smooth, folks. Yeah, and these stink in. I was told that the black coating on these, these little bolts here, little socket head bolts, is to stop it from rusting, rust resistant. Yeah, right. They got plenty of rust on them now. Nothing crazy, but there's definitely a coating on there. Tell you what, if you guys don't have a lift and you're working on a snowmobile, oof, you better build yourself one or try and find one. Because it makes working on these things ten times easier. Alright. Both chokes, both are secured, both fuel lines. Oh, you know what I gotta do? <laughs> Son of a gun! All right, that's got to come back out. It's got to bleed the. Well, first I got to fill the the tube. I'm gonna bleed the oil pump. Terribly big deal. That is the bleeder nut or bolt, screw, whatever. And you got to make sure you fill the tube up first. So let me get that done. All right, so I'm filling the tube up right now, and I just use this little syringe to feed it down in there. This thing's only like a couple cc's or three, or three cc's. So I just stick it in there, and you can't just stick it in the top because it, it needs air to escape when it's going down. So that's why you gotta stick a little tube in here like this. Works pretty good. I'm getting there. Done maybe five or six of these, I think. 
This just makes the whole process easier. Eh, maybe I've done like eight or nine. <laughs> you want to get it all the way to the top and then clean off this end real well. If you stick it back in the burette, it doesn't mess up. And get it right to the tippy top. I hope you can see it, but it's right about there. Tippy top. Fill her up. No jibby drip. See if you guys know what movie that's from. All right, fill her up. No jibby drip. And I'll give you another line from the same scene. You looking at my piece, 50 cent? <laughs> That's a pretty funny part. And then one more. Are you on drugs? <laughs> uh. And the actor, you got to get it after this. The actor Shia LaBeouf. So you figure it out. Fill her up, no jerpy drip. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that? You looking at my piece, 50 Cent? Are you on drugs? That's what was said. So figure it out, people. Put it in the comments. All this just to check the oil output, folks. The next step is to zip tie this thing out of the way so it doesn't get boined. It's got to stay out of the way. Whoa, no. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> it totally went like face down. This thing is all over the place. What the heck? You know what, maybe I'll zip tie it up here first. Oh, there we go. Oh, that pushed the bubble out, nice. So I just squeezed the tube and it got the, the bubble out. Shoot, I don't really even need to zip tie it now. You just... Keep it out of the way just like that. Should be good. There's no kinks. Folks, I think we're about ready to go. That's secure. Let me get all this loose stuff out of here because this thing's going to vibrate. Vibrate. Get this stupid light out of the way. Jeez. Oh, dang it. I gotta bleed that thing. <laughs> Keep forgetting. It's the whole point I took this dumb carburetor off. Daggum it. Okay. There they go. Local boys. Zooming by. And. Again, I'm just going to put a rag down there, folks. Let the rag soak it up. Alright, ready? Just let it come out. No air bubbles and you're good to go. Let's do it one more time. All right. Yikes. Oh geez, nice. Good job, crock pot. Not that a little rag won't cure, right? Drippy dripped a little oil, folks. No big deal. Snug it up. I think that's snug. Snug it up. Don't want to strip it. Okay. Let's put the 
stinking carburetor back in. This blasted thing. I'm hoping it's just going to be pouring out. Or it's just going to be sucking this stuff in. Because then I just replaced the pump. And then I'm good. And that was where my fatness was coming from. But then, there was a couple times in the backyard where I took off and pinned it when I got, you know, in a spot where I could. And it just shut off completely. So I don't know if I got to... I don't think it's the stator because I had it rewound with someone who knows what they're doing. Things do happen though, but they got a lifetime warranty, so I'm not worried about it. It just sucks. I gotta send it back if that's what, you know, whenever it does go. But that's why you don't have only one slit, folks. You have multiple. So the fun doesn't stop, even if one sled goes out of commission. Extreme close up. Just snug her up. Here we go. Okay, we are getting close. Gonna put a little bit more oil in the tube. So yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out what that issue is with the shutoff. It's, it's probably just a wire rub in somewhere. It's usually what it is. But the thing is, is that this is a this is a closed ignition system because it's a it's off of a 95 and um, the engine and the ignition system and stuff. But I have it hooked up to an open ignition main wiring harness. And so what that means, I mean, not technically not a whole, not there, it's not a whole big deal. Because I use the switches from closed ignition system. All right. And so it all works like normal, but... There's one, I don't think it had, I don't really even think it mattered, but there was the throttle safety switch, the emergency stop switch, that three plug prong coming out of the handlebars plugs into a black and purple two prong. And all that black and purple is for an open ignition system is just to ground the system so you don't have any spark. Well, I plugged it in after I figured it out and wired it up right. And I really think it's just for the, I think I just have the emergency stop hooked up. Well, the other male plug or lead is open and I don't have it like covered. And so the only thing that I noticed is that it was close to the handlebars. I mean, it's close to the, the steering shaft and one of the bolts when it shut off last time, but I moved it and I think it started right up again. And um, it was fine after that. So I don't know if it was that or that was just a coincidence. All right. So I'm going to get the sled set up and the camera set up so you guys can watch. All right. So we're all set up. Let's see if we can get this thing started and running it. not even sparking. And that's the problem I was talking about. Use a jumper to bypass the switches. That'll tell me if it's a switch or not. So if it still doesn't fire up after this, should though. All right, let's see what it can do.
Uh, all right. So it used. longer than I was supposed to only by like 30 seconds though but it was just over five when I started so it used three cc's over three cc's in three and a half minutes so let's do a wide open test if we'll even be able to take it I think it's gonna be dumping Tons in. See if this thing will start. It's got the oil pump all the way open. All right, so that was the two minutes at 3,000 RPMs with the fully open. Started at one, went down to 17, that's 16. The 800 is supposed to be from 14.9 to 18.3. That's the 800. So this went down 16 in two minutes at wide open so I don't know um, gosh it's so weird too because I'm not sure if it's like leaking in there or what I don't think it is I mean can't be it's already been blood so yeah um, I'll have to figure out exactly what the stats are for the 700 what they're supposed to be at least and then go from there all right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to test for oil consumption on an Arctic Cat snowmobile. I got more to come in the ZR700, so make sure you guys stay tuned. Um, next, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to properly bleed, prime, and test for proper output of the oil pump, but I'm gonna do it on the bench this time. So if you guys aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell buttons so you guys don't miss out on future updates of this video series and more. And if you guys have any comments or questions, chime in, friendly advice, or if you guys just want to say hello, go ahead and do that. I'm always down. You guys know I like the conversation. So, all right, guys, we'll see you in the next video. So come on back, take care, and God bless. <laughs>